First John in the fourth chapter of First John, Epistle of First John. Turned out this a while back. See how the Lord leads us just a little bit here this evening. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord again. We pray this evening when some of those are not here. We just need to remember in prayer the Adabel family and, and uh, those that are not with us that normally are. And I don't know how long with all the vehicles, Brother Mark and Sister Deborah's got it. Take us all night long just to let the air out of the cars. They be leaving us for long. So. Yeah. Next Sunday. Yeah. You're leaving actually on Sunday. Okay. Less traffic. So that means Wednesday Worst night. day of the week to travel. You know, last night we had the meeting. Well, we'd have to take an ice cream for you, Mark. Huh? We'd have to take an ice cream for you Wednesday night. All right, and now, uh, Brother Clayton, Sister Helen, you'll be here for a next <coughs> week beyond that, I think. Am I correct? No? Oh, when you all be here? Today? Oh, Wednesday night be all's last service, too. Oh, no. I think we had one more Sunday with y'all here. <laughs> Well, the only bad thing about that is if they get up a flat tar, they're going to be real suspicious at that point. <laughs> We'd have a hard time getting out of that, wouldn't we? Yeah, I know where you all come to. Uh, I know where you live. All right. They probably got one of them charger deals in the trunk. You just you know, run on battery, you just stick it on there and pump it up. What does it have to take the whole time? <laughs> oh, well, now wait a minute. Skip <laughs> 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 work. All right, First John in the fourth chapter. Amen. We just to break in there at that first verse. And the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits where they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is God, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard it should come, and even now already is in the world. And I like that verse here, that fourth verse, that ye are, ye are of God, little children, have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Father, we thank you this evening, these precious moments, this time we have together. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help us now for these, this time, this special time. And open, our, open our ears and our hearts to what you'd have for us here this evening. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a lot of spirits, the Bible says. John tells us here, there's a lot of spirits gone out into the world. You say, well, it might sound a little bit Pentecostal. And I know, I know of a Baptist pastor. As a matter of fact, he just got through preaching revival for us. He actually wrote a book on called Commanding Demons. A lot of people don't. Uh, there's been times in missionary meetings over the years where we've shared certain things that's happened on the foreign mission field in Haiti and in Africa that has to do with, with spirits, demons, some of them. Not all spirits are demons. There's the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And, but there are other spirits out there that are false spirits. And do you know that you and I have a spirit? Yeah, yeah. We'll read about that in a little bit. But we have a spirit. And that spirit can be influenced. That spirit can be dampened. That spirit can be encouraged. There's just a lot of things that can happen with your spirit if we're not careful. Yeah. And... Uh, now, we've all heard those phrases throughout our lifetime. Well, they well, sure had a good spirit. Sure felt a good spirit while I was around that crowd. And somebody else by the left said, man, I don't know, that was a horrible spirit. That was a terrible spirit. It's, 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 uh, it's amazing how that spirit sometimes will tell on you. I mean, listen, when you preach or you, you lead songs and sometimes you're up here preaching or you're leading a song or maybe even playing music and you're looking back through there and 
And somebody's singing, oh, I've, I've decided to follow Jesus, but they look like a mule being eaten saw, brother. Their spirit's not right. Got a bad spirit about them. Amen. I don't know if they got up on the wrong side of the bed or they forgot to pray, they didn't read the word. I don't know what the problem is, but sometimes folks will come and they just have a bad spirit. And the Bible says that when you do that, you're quenching the spirit of God. Right. You're hindering the liberty wherewith you've been made free. free. We need freedom and liberty in our services. Yeah. Why you say that, preacher? Well, somebody might want to get blessed, and it's hard to get blessed when you got somebody sitting around that has a contrast spirit that's hindering the service. And even yeah. worse than that, somebody might need Jesus in that service. Somebody, the Lord might be speaking to somebody's heart that needs to come forward and confess out the plague of their heart and get it filled up with the Holy Ghost of God, which is the Holy Spirit, by the way. But if we sit and come in with a bad spirit, all that needs to be taken care of before we come into the sanctuary. Amen. If the devil has come and helped and puffed and discouraged you or, or done whatever to get you upset, then you just need to take out to the Lord before you ever get here. Then when you get here, you're just ready to take the, you're ready to take the devil on. Amen. Some preacher said something like this, you get enough of God, you feel like going into hell with a squirt gun. Well, that might not be the practical thing to do, but I'm just saying you can get encouraged, you can get all zealous and, and strengthened, but why? Through prayer and, and looking to the Lord. Some of the most trying times in my walk with the Lord has been time when the devil has unleashed hell on us, and you get off somewhere and pray, then it, you just feel like you go with the whole satanic army with one arm tied behind your back. Now, I wouldn't I would suggest you try that. I'm just saying you can be zealous and encouraged and your spirit in the Lord to where you're not down in the mouth, so to speak. The devil not, likes nothing more to do than get God's children having a pity party. Now, I'm, all, I'm just going to confess. I'm just going to tell you how some, something that really aggravates me to no end sometimes when I see professing saints putting stuff on social media and making statements like, well, we need to pray for our poor church. What are you talking about? The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And we have all A.L. power over the enemy. Amen. What happened? You backslid already? <laughs> we got a bunch of pantyway sissy people, Christians, so to speak. We need a man up. We need a woman up. The form of God and asking God to, to saturate us from the top of our head to the bottom of our boots with the Spirit of God, His love, and the Holy Ghost and fire. And that will not happen. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pray for them which despitefully use you. They Amen. say all men are evil against you. Amen. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost when they were gnashing on him. They were stoned him with stones and rock. But in the spirit of Jesus, he said, Lord, don't hold this sin to their charge. And he had angels for Paul Bear. The Bible says he just fell asleep. You know he had angels for Paul Bear. They come and picked him up. They stoned Paul on the streets of Lystra. They didn't know if he was dead or alive. They thought they left him for dead. Bible scholars, they don't, they're not sure whether the Lord just resurrected him from the dead or whether they healed him. It don't make any difference. The Lord done something for him. He got up and kept right on preaching. Amen. Now there's some of them say, well, man, they stole me to death. Man, I better quit. Next time I, I won't be around to tell about it. Paul do that? No, he didn't do that at all. No, he just tightened up the spiritual britches, so to speak, drawn the spiritual soil, threw the scalping away, went right on preaching anyhow. Knowing full well it might be his last time. The Lord wasn't done. It's not over with till the Lord says it's done. Amen. It is not over with. Amen. Look what they've done to John on the island of Patmos on the prison island. They murdered all the disciples, by the way. And John, they tried to boil him in a pot of oil. The Holy Ghost was on him. Didn't hurt him. I, I can't help but believe the Bible don't go, in, don't go into any detail about any of that. But... But it might have been like the Hebrew boys in the father furnace. They didn't even smell of smoke when it was over with. Amen. I don't believe there was a hair on John that was singed. God had him to write a book, the last book. The book of the apocalypse, the book of Revelation, how we know it. The Lord had him to write that book. The Lord kept him around. He died an old man, they say. 
Well, they couldn't do anything with him. They had to put him on a prison island. I'm sure whoever else was on that prison island heard about Jesus. I'm certain of that. They locked Paul and Silas up. They locked, they locked well, they, just, they told all about it. Remember the guard helped the guard pray through? Peter and it was Peter. Well, we just going on. It was Peter and it was Paul. And they was all in trouble all the time, it seemed like. While they were preaching Jesus. They told Peter, said they better quit preaching about Jesus. They better be speaking about him. But he said, it's better obey God than man. Amen. He done had his perspective in the right way. Well, amen. And the Bible says, believe not every spirit. There are spirits that will whisper in your ear that is not a spirit of it is not the Holy Spirit. I've seen people commit all sorts of atrocities and then blame God for it. Lord told me to do it. If it's contrary to the written word, I can promise you it wasn't the Holy Spirit that spoke in your ear. It was a spit demonic demon devil spirit who it was. Amen. We was in Africa. They, every five years, they had a ritual there. It was called the Festival of Picking of the Bones. <laughs> we just happened to be there on that fifth year when they were having their festivities, the picking of the bones. They'd make up a liquor they called Bessa Bessa. Or Bessie Bessie, and that's how it was. I don't know what was in it, don't care to know, but it was some kind of a liquor, and they, they start drinking that early in the morning hours, and they went by noon, and they done got liquored up. Then they went out to the tombs and they knocked the ends of the tombs out. They'd have a, a, a basket or whatever they could, a box, whatever they could, and then they would take the loved ones, they'd rake them out, what was left of them, into these boxes or crates or whatever they had, and, and they, they caught them picking the bones. They cleaned the bones up. Then they would take the, the skull and the bones and, and they'd take them into town. They said that they'd visit with other bones and visit with family and they'd commune and talk to each other. Well, they probably did. It was probably demons. Yeah. Devils, demons. <laughs> and they heard voices. Well, praise God. Some preaching, some of them preaching. Sometimes folks scare folks half to death. But we are in a spiritual warfare, by the way. We are, we are in a spiritual warfare. God's children and the angels. Remember when Daniel prayed those 21 days? And the angel finally came. Hey, Daniel, God heard you praying. But they had to battle the way through. The forces of, of Satan were trying to hinder them from answering Daniel. We should be encouraged. We pray for our children. We pray for our grandchildren. We pray for our friends, our neighbors, some of us, a few of us, our parents. And, and, and listen, we don't know what in the world kind of a warfare is taking place in the spiritual realm, but we got to keep on praying. John, in the, okay. when he was on the island of Patmos, God took him into heaven land, so he had a little bit of insight on what to write. God told him what to write. But while he was there, he seen the smoke of the tomb, man. That, uh, smoke, I'm sorry. He seen smoke going up before the altar. He asked the angel, he said, what means this? I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. May not be caught in the verbatim. He said, what is this smoke? In other words, what? what is it? He said, this is the prayer of the saint that goes up before God continually. So you see, your praying is not in vain. It, that incense, that sweet incense that goes before the throne of God, it, the angel said, this is the prayer of the saints. Bible, no wonder the Bible abolishes us and says to pray without ceasing. Pray. Be in communion with the Lord. Somebody said, Well, I don't have time. I got to work for a living. I've got to, I can't be on my knees all day and all that. You don't got to be. You can be driving down the highway in meditation, praying, talking to the Lord, just like your best friend, because they ought to be anyhow. Amen. You can be doing your job. It don't be cutting your hand or your fingers off. Don't lose your focus, but you can still be talking to the Lord every opportunity that you have. And when you do that, the devil ain't going to have room to come in and infiltrate your mind that's been sanctified to the will of God. He's not going to be able to come in and put a bunch of nonsense in your head. Amen. And if the devil does come and attempt to do that, you'll have enough grace of God and grit. It'll not have any effect whatsoever. Flee from the devil. What? Flee from him, what the Bible said. Resist and flee from him. Or he'll flee from you if you'll resist the devil. He'll flee from us, the Bible says. Well, praise God. Spirit, antichrist spirit. Well, we tried to preach just a little bit this morning about the end time, just a little bit. 
and, and do what the Lord tells us to do. And uh, But this Antichrist spirit that we're preaching about here this evening, it is contrary to the will of God. It's contrary to the chapter and verse written here up. The devil wants to, he wants to mess us all up. He wants to deceive us, crop our minds up. The Bible said he is the accuser of the brethren. He'll accuse you of things. I told somebody here a while back, somebody said that, well, I messed up. I did. Well, don't let the devil backslide you over a bunch of nonsense. Just talk to Jesus about it. Be done with it. The devil will come and backslide you over some nonsense you might not have been responsible for to begin with. The devil probably doesn't have it all planned. Well, amen. amen. The Bible, of course, acknowledges it, it warns us against false prophets, false teachers going out into the world. He gives us a little bit of counsel here and advice. But I, I like to sit over 1 Thessalonians just for a minute in that fifth chapter. I thought I had it marked, but if I didn't, I will. Here we go. Very, very familiar verse of Scripture. He gives us a whole lot of instructions here, actually in that fifth chapter, but I'm not going to read all that. In that 23rd verse, it says this, and the very God of peace. And by the way, when we're in the will of God, we have peace about it. Yes, we do. A lot of folks ask us, well, how you know you're in the will of God? Well, for one thing, if you're in God's will, you'll have peace. Amen. Despite all adversity and everything around you that might be total chaos, it don't make no difference, but if you're in the will of God, it don't matter if bullets are flying around your head, the place is on fire, whatever. If, if you're in the will of God, there'll be peace about it. You'll have peace and contentment. He's a God of peace. He says, in the very God of peace, sanctify you holy, completely. Set you apart, be made holy unto the will of God. Sanctify you means be set apart and made holy. In the Old Testament, under the law, there we find it, that the vessels of the temple were sanctified. They were set apart for use in the temple. They were called sanctified and made holy. They were even anointed with oil. In the, under this grace dispensation, this wonderful <laughs> grace salvation that God has given us for mercy's sake, we, we as temples of the Holy Spirit of God are sanctified. That means we live apart. It's not holiness within ourselves, not a pharisaical, sadducical holiness, but holiness through the blood of Jesus, Amen. only through Him. Hebrews in the 13th chapter said, He sanctified the people with His own blood that He suffered without the gate. He sanctifies us. He sets us apart from the world. And the Bible says, even here in 1 John, if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. So we have a choice to make. If we love him, we're living a sanctified life. I appreciate that doctrine of entire sanctification. It means that we're living apart, not in our own righteousness, but through his righteousness. Amen. We're made righteousness through him and what he has done on Calvary on the cross. Amen. Amen. It's nothing in ourselves. The Bible said the prophet declared that our righteousness is as filthy rags. But we should have an objective which is holiness. Somebody says we can't do it. No, you can't. Not on your own. But praise God, we can be set apart, living the life of a sanctified through his grace and mercy if we'll abide in him. Amen. He says here, I pray God a peace. Sanctify you holy. Completely thrown through. Roman, in the Roman letter in the 12th chapter, in the first verse, he said, Therefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto your reasonable service. I've never known the Lord to ask us to ever do anything unreasonable. I just haven't. He's never done it. And whatever he asks you to do, he'll give you grace and grit to accomplish his perfect will in your life. It's just that simple. Again, the bear God of peace, sanctify you holy. I pray God your whole, listen here, spirit, your spirit, <laughs> and soul, and body. Now somebody says, oh, well, it don't matter what I do with my body. It don't make no difference. Well, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are, we're representatives. 
living overseas for many years, can you imagine almost every country has an embassy? In the country of Haiti, we have an American embassy. Well, we were in Africa. They, in every place, they have an American embassy. They have a French embassy. They have a, 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 many other countries have embassies in that country. And in the country of Haiti, we have the American embassy. Well, those people and the ambassador that works in that embassy, embassy, they represent the people of the United States of America. And so when they're there, they should look respectable. They should walk re respectably. Their character should be uh, have good character about them. Can you imagine somebody that would go over there and, and some man dressed up like a woman and, and then <laughs> representing the American people? Walk around with an old marijuana cigarette in their mouth and maybe a, a bottle of Jack Daniels in their pocket? Would that represent all of us? No. I don't think so. No. How much more should we that are representatives, ambassadors of the Most High God? Yeah. Does that mean you need to come with a $500 spit start suit? No, it don't mean that at all. It just means that that what the old saying was, somebody would have swore it was in the Bible. I don't know any chapter and verse for it, but cleanliness and godliness. <laughs> We've all heard that, right? Heard Grandma, it. make sure you heard about that. <laughs> that bar of ivory soap or that old pine tar. <laughs> I mean, it was good for washing you down. It was also good for cleaning your mouth out occasionally if it was needful. <laughs> they were believers in that. I think today they would probably call that child abuse. Well, they didn't call it child abuse then. Half my teachers be doing prison time. Well, praise God. We well, might do some good if we went back to some of that, might we? Amen. Well, amen. amen. Might do some good if we get back to some of that. So he wants us to live apart. And be we're representatives of the most high God. We're not in a fashion show, but modesty. Do, do we really, uh, you know, there are churches out there that have down in their bylaws, well, this is our interpretation of modesty. Well, that's the same thing that the Pharisees did, the rabbis. They have what they call rabbinical laws. God would give a commandment, then they'd add to it. Yeah. They add that they would add to it, you see. But the Bible tells us that all those ordinances were hung on Calvary. They were all hung on Calvary. I can't help but believe that when we get a good dose of this salvation, God gives us a good dose of common horse sense. We know what's modest and what isn't. And if you're doing something that the Lord's not happy about, He's going to chastise you. Amen. And if you're pig-headed and bow-headed and don't hear what the Lord's speaking to you, then He's going to do more than chastise you. He's going to give you a spiritual whooping is what's going to happen. Then if you continue and your rebellion has a sin of witchcraft, it's going to give even worse yet. The good thing about it is, though, he said he was married to the backslider. Yeah. Married to the backslider. Yeah. I can't imagine anybody wanting to live a, a, a life without the blessing of the Lord. If you're, if you're committing sin and just maliciously, presumptuously, just willfully committing sin of all sorts, that's what we would refer to as Baptist Catholicism. You know, you go out all week and live like saying hell and the devil, and you come to church on Sunday and and uh, you feel good about it, and then you go back out and just keep... You can get a good dose of salvation when you're not going to have a want to do them things. Because I'll tell you right now, you get a good dose of salvation, a good dose of salvation, the Lord will take the want to out to do that, to commit that, which is anti-Christ and contrary to the will of God. The Lord will put a want to in there to do the right thing. Because, why? Because we love the Lord, that's why. He's changed our initiative, our ambition, everything about it. He's changed it if we're allowed to do it. But he's not going to strong arm you. It's by your own choice, by your own choosing. Let me read that verse one more time, and I'm going to follow it up this time. The bear God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely through and through, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. So you see, he's called us, he's called us to live a life of the sanctified, and he said, but he's called us to do that, but yet he will do it for us. That's what he's saying here. 
It's, by, it's through him. It's not by self-righteousness, as the prophet said, is as filthy rag, but it's because he gives us grace and grit and power to overcome the enemy. Amen. You see, does that mean we don't ever mess up? It don't mean that. But we're not going to we're not going to be habitual messer uppers. Does that make sense? Yes. We're not going to make it a habit, are we? No. When we mess up, we're going to look up. Not to, you know what? That's one thing I appreciate appreciate about the Baptists because you got some outfits out there. Every time you mess up and at least little anything, they done got you in hell. They got one foot in hell. Yeah. All you done messed up. Y'all backslid now. And, well, that's, that's, what, that, that's something like the devil would say, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we do all mess up oftentimes. You know, in the Old Testament, I believe it's the book of Leviticus, Leviticus they said they even give sin offerings for the sins of ignorance. Yes. I think we've all been guilty of that. I've certainly done my part. Sins of ignorance. Yeah. Had to offer sacrifice. And the Bible said, He that knows do it good and do it or not, do him in his sin. Amen. How many times God spoke to you hard about doing something and you had to justify your way out of it? Huh? Good. Then later on you had to ask the Lord to forgive you, didn't you? That's right. Lord, I messed up. I'm sorry. I'll not do it this time, next time. The Lord speaks to us. Why? He's our elder brother. He's our Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. He's everything. He's everything, but he has. A, but we have a love affair with him. We're the bride. He's the bridegroom. He's the bridegroom. I told somebody a while back. Told me they'd been together. She was 13 years old, and he was 15. I said, "Oh my goodness, you raised your wife. <laughs> raised your wife. She's a child. Yeah. Raised your wife. Well, that's about how what the Lord's doing with his bride, isn't it? Think about that." <laughs> The Lord's working. He's helping to perfect the bride. He's coming back for a bride that's without spot and without blemish. That's the church. It ain't going to make no difference whether it's Pentecostal, Baptist, or Presbyterian. It, it's the blood washed. Right. Those whose names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. Well, praise God. Antichrist spirit. We live together. We're there. We are there. We're in a spiritual warfare. Sometimes I believe it might be like Elisha was when he walked out of the out in city gates and his servant was with him. And there was a whole Syrian army was. They was encompassed all about. I said, what are we going to do? And what the man of God said that was the servant. What are we going to do? I'm paraphrasing here. He said, Lord, would you please open that man's eyes? Amen. <laughs> Lord, open that man's eyes was. And the whole chariot and the army of heaven was right there standing by. Amen. I can't imagine what it must have been like when Jesus hung there on the place in the skull. I can't imagine. Can you imagine if their eyes would have held the heavenly? The whole sky, the whole heavens, probably plumb full of chariots and, and horses and, and and just just all they had to do, all the Lord had to say, come get me. It had slayed that army like they wasn't even hardly a puff of breath. But he didn't do that. He knew he had to go to Calvary for you and I, so we might have salvation. He knew he had to do it, and he did. That lamb without spot and without blemish, that sacrificial lamb. So we come down this evening, spend a good Sunday, good Sunday evening. And uh, I'm looking on. I, as far as I know, everybody in here is supposed to be saved and on their way to heaven, love Jesus. But then on the other hand, we'll have a piano, maybe a verse, maybe just as I am for a verse. If somebody does have a heartfelt need, then you come and we'll pray about it. Somebody needs healing. I believe in divine healing. Amen. Seen the Lord heal folks time and time and time again. Does he heal just everybody for everything? Well, not always. Paul was a great man of God, great Bible. He was our theologian of the New Testament, but yet he had a he had a, he had an affliction. The Lord didn't heal him of it, or maybe to keep him humble. I don't know why. The Lord knows what he's doing. He looks ahead. He sees beyond what you and I see. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Mark. As we come to close this evening, if you have any need whatsoever, it's a good time to pray. Let's pray for the church. Pray for those not here. If you need prayer, come on. If you're able, please stand. I'm